It is currently 7 o'clock in the morning at the Creator Clash Airbnb. And if there's one thing I like being treated to at 7 o'clock in the morning, it is extremely loud, ear-pounding construction directly right next to the Airbnb. Oh my God, folks. We have found, we have found the ultimate gem. If you guys are in the mood to hear some classic emplum and complaints, well, I guess I have come to the right place because um, Rusty Cage, my associate, he, he clearly has an eye for these places. We might have just found <laughs> the greatest Airbnb of all time. It's, it's seven in the morning. So uh, this is the Airbnb out here. Quaint little place. What, what, what a nice little, what a nice little slice of pie, right down here in downtown Tampa. Could be a very cozy location if it weren't located directly next to an active construction site that starts operating at seven o'clock in the morning. Can Rusty pick him or what? Can Rusty pick him or what, folks? We're here for the next. We are here for the next three nights. It should be a fun one. It should be a fun weekend of events. Everyone staying up late, drinking, and being awoken with a nice 7.30 unmutable alarm clock in the form of a giant high-rise condo construction site elevator. Three days later. Welcome back to MTV. This is my crib. I'm here standing next to a female soy face. Uh, yeah, this has been, uh, four nights, four days and nights in this place. Madhouse. Madhouse. I can barely sleep, I can barely sleep any of the nights. Uh, but hey, at least the sidewalks outside smell like dog urine, and, uh, there's nightlife. Perfectly worth playing, uh, $3,500 a month to live here and rent. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the review for the... Airbnb, not spectacular, not spectacular at all. And that's why I'm inviting you, the viewers of The Downward Diary, to have a once in a lifetime experience of just the luxury, the luxury that YouTubers live in when we go on these, uh, these frivolous, ego inflating trips where we do nothing but uh, party, drink, and uh, cloud chase. So um, without further ado, let's take a look at my crib. So this is sort of the POV when you uh, first enter the location. You see some lips devouring what looks like a rat's tail. Very engaging, very inviting. Uh, I suppose the theme of this place, I mean, there is no theme. It's a bunch of like disparate artifacts put together. Like there's military cases, like industrial military equipment mixed in with like cheesy, tacky vector art. I think the story of this place, like the origin of this place, is that it was some kind of like artist's warehouse. Like whoever owns this has some kind of like an art gallery where I guess they make like cheesy looking tacky art for like stupid people with a lot of money to buy. I mean, there's like really nothing about this art that screams like, uh, genius, oh my god, let me bow down and just be in sheer reverence of just putting this stuff in a museum. Definitely doesn't look like something that you plugged into Mid Journey and just blew up on a giant poster board. When you're out here in the living area, you're being just constantly stared at by these uh, three wonderful women here. I mean, as you can see, these ladies are in quite a bit of a state of shock that you would be foolish enough to rent this Airbnb, but here we are. They uh, stay at you and judge you the entire time. Uh, you ever feel like you're being watched because, uh, yeah, these three uh, soy-facing ladies. This is the female soy expression. They, you don't have to open your mouth as much, but this is definitely the craft that, like, Pokimane or someone puts in her thumbnails. But um, I'm sure it's convincing art. I'm sure, like, some total dickweed with, like, a million dollars in the bank is going to just drop... 10k on one of these beauties because uh, art is dead and there's the, there's no more uh, substance left because it's all just the whole thing is just made 
as an instrument to appease the wealthy, low IQ wealthy people who believe that like platitude and stuff like good vibes is like uh, an artistically valuable and nuanced statement. We are surrounded by um, by a beautiful museum-like artwork. Definitely something that makes me feel at home. They uh, they really went all out with the furniture. Definitely doesn't look like it was thrifted at a yard sale or just picked up at the when IKEA is liquidating the last of their supply. And um, yeah, military barracks. I definitely felt like a soldier quartering in some strange foreign land because. Um, they couldn't even have like the decency to put in a table. They have to put in like, they have to put in these completely unlevel surfaces where you can't like even uh, put anything on it and lie it level without uh, much complication. The kitchen area, it's okay, I guess. There's no water supply. We were here for four days without any consistent sort of water. I guess you could use the tap water here that's like probably full of just toxic industrial chemicals on account of being in the middle of a giant city and dog urine which seems to heavily infest the uh the streets around here oh you get this uh i guess amusing image of an astronaut taking a dump um i would certainly like to take a dump in the house of uh whoever the owner of this airbnb is but hey it gets better um let's take a look at the uh downstairs downstairs bathroom so uh, immediately there is a undivided shower just out in the open. There's no barrier or wall or anything preventing the water from splashing all over the rest of the bathroom, splashing all over this priceless artwork. Jeez, I, I hope they had that insured for real. Uh, black toilet. Have you ever known a place with a uh, black toilet that's not completely psycho, not completely psychotic? I don't know. Maybe this is the ultimate heuristic device to tell whether who was involved in the construction of an area was uh, off his meds or not. But yeah, and then uh, you get this tacky uh, golden golden yard sale frog to uh, watch you while you take a dump and regret your life choices on this toilet that smells like complete chunks of vomit and uh, unwashed feces. Uh, you got the internet here next to uh, next to Fido. Sleeping in here definitely doesn't feel like I'm being barked at a dog all night with all this uh, wonderful construction and industrial noises that begin at 7 a.m. every day, except for Sunday. Well, I guess we have one thing to be thankful to the Lord about, the day of rest. Um, internet router is here, complete crap. Uh, like slower than DSL, I, I've lived with DSL internet up until like a couple years ago and I can confidently say that the connection in here was worse. Like it had trouble loading pictures from Twitter. But where we really get we really get the ultimate the ultimate experience up here is in the bedrooms. Now at first glance it might be kinda normal. Murphy bed it folds up. I don't really know for what reason. I don't know why this would be a space that you would need to use for anything other than a bed, but whatever. Um, seems kind of normal until you start to pan up here and realize that we're not actually in a separate contained room. No, we are in a cubicle. This was like some kind of open flat before, some just open space. I doubt this was even designed as a livable area. It seemed like mostly like it was designed as office space and uh, they just erected this incomplete divider that doesn't go up flush with the wall. It's like intersecting where the ceiling fan is. So I guess they didn't want to move that fixture. So they said like, uh, yeah, why bother? <laughs> why bother completing an actual wall and creating a sense of privacy? There's like a power strip up here, by the way. Very convenient location for that. <laughs> I definitely don't feel like I'm in a house that was designed by a schizophrenic person. Um, wonderful privacy in the bedroom. There's two rooms next to this and you, you might as well make friends with the people there because you're gonna be getting to know their intimate sounds at night. They're breathing, they're tossing, they're turning because there, there's, there's just no sound barrier in here. There's no, there's no soundproofing. You might as well just be in an open flat. It, it creates the illusion of privacy and I get to hear uh, 
snoring, waking me up at uh, five in the morning from uh, little uh, rat packs like this over here. I was listening to Rusty Cage fart all night. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Indeed. Maybe if you have like a fart fetish, maybe you have like a eavesdropping fetish, this could be a good place. Like, as you can see out here, at, at no point does this ever become a contained soundproof area. Um, and there's, there's no fucking outlets? Uh, yeah, the electrical are, electrical outlets are few and far between. We have a random sink in our bedroom. Oh, it's, it's nice that you guys got a sink. We got a desk. By the way, it drips. <laughs> And you cannot make it stop dripping. Oh, yeah. It drips. It's been dripping one drop of water every four seconds the entire time we've been here. I'm sure that's definitely not psychotic to fall asleep to. It's a good thing that you have uh, Muhammad Ali, Tupac, Biggie Smalls, and I, I don't know who this fourth guy is, but it's a good thing you have the power to remind you to be strong because you're going to need a lot of inner strength to be here. This bathroom... As you can see, is wonderfully designed. There's about, um, when you open the door up to here, there's about like a foot of space, less than the amount needed to um, actually walk through it. So to actually enter the bathroom, you have to completely open the door, flush to the wall like a butler, and then walk in. Um, another bit of ingenious design, the light switch for the bathroom is located outside of the room. So when you're stumbling around at night, trying to get in and turn the stuff on. You have to back up, shimmy past the door awkwardly, rub your back on this baseboard here, and then turn on the light, and then you can uh, actually proceed with your, uh, with your business. Uh, so the flush is really weak, so the yeah. toilet paper, like... Oh, the toilet the paper is finally gone. Well, I wish I'd taken footage of that, but the, um, yeah, there was toilet paper fused to that bowl the entire time. Like, like every time you went to go use that toilet, you got the pleasure of seeing someone's used toilet paper. I'm glad to see that the uh, cleaning fee, the $100 cleaning fee, hundreds of dollars, uh, it would be nice if it was just $100 only. It's good to see that the cleaning fee went to such use where there's like toilet paper molecularly fused to the toilet bowl with uh, someone else's waste in there. That makes me feel real safe. Um, there was a cockroach when we moved in right here. Not too bad. I, I, I've got a high tolerance for bugs, but um, that, I know that's something that would definitely bother a lot of people. More so to me, it indicates that uh, the cleaning fee money is probably not being put to good use. So that's pretty much the entire space. Can you believe they said this place seats 12 people? After uh, just looking, that, that was the entire floor space right there. Rusty, do you have any words about uh, the uh, the Airbnb that we've been forced to weather for the last several days over the noise of this extremely loud construction? Oh yeah, I fucking love this place. Like the layout's really nice. Uh, the beds are comfortable. Uh, it's just like it's it, I don't know. It was a really good time. It fits a lot of people very comfortably. Now back here, I guess that this was advertised as an amenity. Oh, a nice little nice little event area. Oh, and by the way, also there's this jacuzzi that was never used that has all this industrial waste on it because we're under a 20-story construction site. But yeah, um, also on site is this bonus room. There's some nice studio action where you can see the brilliant artists here at work. Now, I never got to go in this place, but the people who were, the people who were before they were hastily kicked out by the Airbnb owners because they foolishly left this place unlocked that wasn't supposed to be open. There was some wonderful selection of art that we got a, we got a little bit of documentation of. There's a picture of Bitcoin. There was like a Jesus Christ picture of Elon Musk. There was like a picture of Superman and Batman making out. Just to give you a caliber, a caliber of like the wonderful taste of the, the patrons of this art gallery. And speaking of the art gallery, we weren't even allowed to park here the entire time. We had to take time out of our day and move the cars to like a public parking garage because these cheapskates double booked the event. They booked an art gallery in that area and they basically told us like, hey, uh, you're gonna have to move your cars because uh, we're too greedy. We're too greedy to wait to host an art event on an off day. No, we wanna double book everything double our profits, 
double everything and uh, and sell more of this uh, really wonderful and definitely not quiche and amateur art over here. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is. Um, I've had the pleasure of living here for four days. Thank you for joining me in my crib. And uh, hopefully, if you're on Airbnb, you will have uh, booked someplace a little bit nicer than this. Several days later. All right, so it's been a week. We've had a week to recover and regain all the lost sleep from sleeping next to a construction site. Rusty, can you walk us through the thought process of what you thought you were booking with this and what actually ended up happening? So this Airbnb, the way that they had it listed was um, like this two-story building in the middle of the city, uh, just a few blocks away from the convention center where we were going to watch the fight. And in the images that they showed, on the outside, it was just empty lots surrounding it. Uh, as though, you know, some buildings that were there were cleared out and they had some future project. Right. It's like this photo they were using for the listing must have been taken years ago. Yeah. Because it was, yeah at, this least, could, at least. Uh, I mean, like, I don't know how long it takes to build the structure out of like a 20 story condominium, but it's got to be like 18 months or something at least. It, these pictures definitely should have been updated. Uh, it, it seemed intentional that they didn't update them for several reasons. Um, because, yeah, of course we get there and there's buildings uh, right next to it being constructed. Um, on the inside, they took a lot of deceptive pictures. It says that this fits 12. It was a huge stretch. Yeah. Huge stretch. We had, what, like eight people, nine people? Yeah, and people were like shuffling around, struggling to find places to sleep. It's because I think I remember looking at the listing when we were staying there and they had like duplicated the amount of pullout couches in the listing because they only had three in total. Is that correct? Yeah, well, all the, the thing is they, they moved all the couches, the fold-out couches from downstairs yeah. where they could have been folded out and they moved them upstairs into these like weird makeshift rooms. Yeah, so, so, so they had a picture on the listing showing three pull-out couches on the bottom floor and then they'd had three pull-out couches on the loft in the photographs, but what they actually ended up doing, there's only three in total, they took like two of the pull-out couches from the bottom floor, put it on the top floor, and then photographed them there, and they ended up like listing or advertising visually that they had five or six pull-out couches, and it was only three. Yeah, so I mean, that was the sleeping arrangement, whatever, we kind of knew that we're in for a shit fest, uh, we're all just gonna crash wherever. Uh, we pull out the couch where Justin Wang was sleeping, there's a a big blood stain or something. Oh god, somewhere. do we have a picture of that? Uh, I don't know if we... If, oh man, I, don't I should have taken a picture. picture. Some of the other things is like they had nothing to wash dishes with. Oh yeah, no water, no trash bags. Yeah, like, no trash bags. Toilet paper for only like one day when we were staying there for like three nights. And so, all right, whatever. I'm fine with it because it was a very convenient location. All in all, it was a, a decent sleep. Uh, I mean, I got used to it. I got used to construction after the first night. So whatever we clean up, we leave. Um, a few days later, I get an email and it's uh, they're say they're requesting money. I'm going, all right, fuck. Like, what's this gonna be about? Is it gonna be some cleaning fees? Uh, some someone accidentally like scuffed the wall or some shit? Oh yeah, the cleaning fee. There was a ro like a dead roach right there <laughs> in the middle of the building. But I'm sure they took the last person's cleaning fee. Yeah, well, this is this is what I'm gonna say. So I looked at what they said and it was damages to. Uh, a flat screen TV that was mounted onto the wall in one of the upstairs bedrooms, the bedroom that I was staying in. And we never used this TV. No, couldn't, you couldn't. I, I don't think there you was couldn't. even an outlet. It was unplugged. And so there's just a like a screen there just to kind of look. I don't even think you knew where the, cool. we, could, we could find the remote. Yeah, I couldn't find the remote it, for it. I did not use this TV at you, all. You couldn't even use it because there's no privacy and if anyone else is trying to sleep you couldn't have the tv on if all three people were watching tv it would have been chaotic up there so yeah we didn't fuck with the tv we were barely ever in the room and then somehow in that time they're claiming that uh we completely damaged the uh the lcd screen uh and now the tv doesn't turn on at all and i was like i absolutely dispute this because we were in maybe a total of nine hours through the entire trip where we in the bedroom 
and no one even messed with that TV. It was, it was untouched. It was untouched. So here's what I think happened because when we got there on that first night, the first thing I noticed whenever we were all like moving stuff into the bedrooms was that there was still a uh, like a party uh, light stick, something that had like frills at the end that's battery powered and you know it looked cool in the dark if you're like at a, a rave or a concert or something. There was one of those that were on the couch and it was still on. It was still like flashing, which would show me that no one did a walkthrough after whatever the massive last party thing was. They probably did like a really quick run through to make sure there's no trash out, uh, grab the sheets, put them back on. But it didn't seem like they even really checked to see like, are there belongings left behind? Uh, does the TV work? So I think whoever stayed there before were having like fucking glow stick raves or something. Someone broke the TV. Uh, they said, all right, we're out of here. And there was no time in between to actually check uh, if something was damaged from the last people who rented. Or it actually could have been the people who were renting out the place in the first place because they seemed to use that constantly for parties. Yeah, of uh, course. I mean, which was evident by the fact that uh, we couldn't park in the driveway for that entire day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did, how did you feel? How did you feel when they texted you that we were we would have to move our cars to paid parking from from our reservation with this Airbnb because they double booked our reservation with wh whatever stupid art exhibition yeah, event so that they had. There's an art show going on at the same time. So they're like, hey, you have to move your cars. OK, well, whatever, like we'll figure it out. We're not paying for this, though. We need to be compensated for the, um, the paid parking across the street. The guy goes, well, I'll pay for two of the three cars. It's a 12 person. Area. Yeah, you're booking out booking out for 12 people. But you're only allowing, you're only allowing two cars. He's like, he's expecting us to pull up in clown cars. Yeah. Where like seventeen people step outside of one car. Yeah, that was that was fucked up. I mean, all right, here's what I'll say about the that location, that Airbnb, and whatever. Uh, that kind of that was irritating. The whole having to move and them having like a fucking art festival surrounding the house. Um, I could get over that because we did figure it out with parking. It was all compensated. Uh, I thought the pictures were deceptive. The guy should definitely be updating the listing. Uh, Dude, so that, it's just like a blatant scam. I think the location is fucking awesome. It's an awesome location. Not necessarily the best interior, but like how close it is, everything's great. But also trying to charge me uh, $475 for a broken yeah. TV that I never used. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't know how far I can take this with Airbnb, but I'm not paying that shit. Yeah, for me, it was almost like the little things. Like, you don't have water. You don't have like water supply other than the d disgusting tap water that's full of dog urine from like the 10,000 dogs people walk in channel side Tampa apparently and it, it it's just so slot these guys are just like massive cheapskates yeah it, massive cheapskates they're, they're taking advantage of the fact that they have probably the only Airbnb um, in that downtown area and yeah so they I guess they don't really want it to be super nice or feel like they even have to make it super nice I mean the stuff downstairs, the decor was cool. It looks cool, besides like the crappy uh, paintings yeah. on the wall. But I did not care for it. Oh, I loved like the the tables. It was like ammo boxes and the tables you couldn't put anything on because they weren't actually level. <laughs> they all the CRTVs that was cool, but they weren't plugged in. So what good are they? Um, yeah, I don't know. I I I don't care that I don't really have that high standards of um, of like living when it comes to you know sleeping at places for events or hotels or whatever, but I'm not going to get scammed out of $475. All right, something yeah. Something I clearly didn't do. I guess the moral of the story is that I've, I've generally had good experiences on Airbnb myself, but I've heard like an equal number of people who's saying like, oh, it sucks, it sucks. And we finally, we finally got one of these experiences where it's like, wow, it's like really calling like Airbnb's service in a yeah. question where it's like apparently uh, this guy must have been doing this for like 18 months now where this active construction is going on and the listing is not updated to reflect that in any way that's that's just completely deceptive in my mind it, you're it, not talking directly to from the um the tenant to the owner of the airbnb they have a middleman uh who's like oh we'll take care of it and which is good but also it's like man this guy does not want to deal with any of this shit and he's just letting some other company take control of it uh, I mean, even right now, it's like I have some liaison in the emails saying that they're going to mediate between, you know, me and the owner of the Airbnb, which whatever. Um, well, the moral, the moral of the story, 
be wary of cheapskates, especially in Florida, especially in like Florida metropolitan areas. There are a ton of like cheapskate scammer people who they will rip you off and take your money. Yeah, this is probably really overpriced anyways, but if you compared it to like hotels, uh, quality of living down but price also very fun. well also to mention that idubs the genius scheduled the event during the taylor swift concert <laughs> series where every single person in the state was converging on the city of tampa to watch like this once in five year experience so that, that probably jacked up the surrounding rates a bit but thank you idubs for uh helping us out so much with this and uh hopefully hopefully the next the next big emp and rusty travel event we will find someplace better yeah.